The Naxals of Bastar have managed to inflict considerable damage on our security forces in the recent past. In 2017 alone, till November, Chhattisgarh witnessed the highest loss of life amongst other states of the infamous Red Corridor. The Red Corridor is the region in the eastern, central and the southern parts of India that experience considerable Naxalite insurgency. The Naxalite groups mainly consist of armed cadres of CPIM. These are also areas that suffer from greatest illiteracy, poverty, overpopulation in modern India and span parts of Andhra Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Jharkhand, Maharashtra, Odisha, Telangana and West Bengal states. A total of 151 lives were lost to this mindless violence in Chhattisgarh this year, of which 24 were civilians, 58 were the Javans of our security forces and 69 were Naxals. Needless to say that there have been numerous reports of human rights violations by our security forces, illegal mining mafia supported by the government of the day and the severe lack of infrastructure and development in tribal areas in the past. Many argue upon the definitions of development and that the tribals are best left alone while illegal mining and human rights abuses are probed into. We spoke to the special DGP of anti naxal operations, Chhattisgarh, DM Avasti, about the human rights abuse. Okay, all the security forces which are working here should not do one single case of any uh, human rights violation. It is very, very important. To win the heart is the most important thing. How strongly have the instructions gone from your office? As I have been telling in all channels, all newspapers and writing to them that will not and I am in this in your interview also I am saying with I will not allow this thing any human right violation done by anybody whether it is Chhattisgarh police, CRP or BSO, anything he will be held guilty as per the law of the land and will not we don't like this kind of because they are we cannot exploit our own people going to there in jungle and operating is our duty they whether even if they don't support us we can't kill them, we can't harass them, we can't molest women and children. So that, this year I am happy we have not got the, these kind of complaints and forces are going ahead. Now, while most of the journalists tell the story of tribals and the Naxals and the prime focus become these two particular entities, Somewhere in between, we forget the men of our security forces and the work they do. The recent incidents of Naxal violence and the damage they inflicted upon our security forces has been quite distressing. But here in Bastar, it appears that the security forces now have it under control. Now to understand this entire phenomenon of how these Naxals operate, we have seen of late what happened in Sukma and then what happened in Bastar. These incidents keep happening. How is it that despite such huge uh, uh, security forces in such huge numbers that we are not able to contain these Naxals? I mean, CRPF had an internal inquiry, why it happened to only CRPF, why not, like there is, uh, I mean, there is a misnomer, mm -hmm. only CRPF is, you know, gets it. We also have our forces, our state armed police, our state uh, forces, they are not hit, because all the time they are very careful, vigilant, somehow CRPF is also doing a lot of introspection, right, there is something 
why it happened. I don't know about the result of that inquiry, right? but what it appears, uh, like uh, there has to be some uh, adhering to their own SOP, right. because they were attacked only 200, 300 meters from their camp. Okay. It's a question when the camp is established nine years back, how can you are hitting I mean, just nearby here? Maybe, so whatever uh, is being done, being done by CRPF to correct the, these mistakes. If you mistake, these they people are watching. Yeah. If you are in Naxal area, then control. If this is a I mean, war zone, combat zone, your enemy is watching. And in all last 5 10 years, they all attacked, uh, all the time Naxals attacked, only when forces were careless or casual. Just a casual and regularly. So you have to be vigilant. So they keep monitoring the pattern, monitoring. they see when you are at your weakest, and that's why. I can tell you, in, but in operations, we have an upper Always. It happens only when forces are going in a convoy, somebody gives them a blast, six people right. one. Or this Burka Pal thing, when the forces were eating food. So this, what is it? I mean, this we know. And we have been trying and telling everybody, you don't be so casual and careless. During our journey into the Naxal infested region, we decided to go on to the interiors of Bastar and take a peek inside the deployments of Bastar police in the region and how they operate in dense jungles. This, however, was not very easy. There were no proper roles to begin with. We mostly negotiated the rocky terrain and passed through dense jungles as we decided to go to a remote place close to the Orissa border called Koling. After a two hour long back braking drive with one completely worn out car tire, we arrived to a site of tribals in Koling in a celebratory mode that day somehow. When asked the reason, the answer was far from what most media organizations show or write about. These tribals were happy because apparently the Bastar police had finally established a camp in their area. And that too, owing to the demands of the locals. The locals in Koling told us that they were fed up of Naxals and did not want to live their lives under constant fear and hence had requested the Bastar police to establish a camp in their area. After months of protests, the Bastar police finally took a call on the Koling camp. So what is here? Pandu ko na maar diye. To isi karan se camp ke liye ham larna do bara ham log suru kiye. अब पहले ऐसा नहीं था हमारे गांव में और यहां कुछ किसी को डराव नहीं था ना किसी से कुछ नहीं था तो हम लोग ना ऐसी जीवन अपन कर रहे थे तो जो पांडू मारा गया ना साहब उस समय से हम लोगों को मालूम आ गया कि नक्सली हम लोगों को मारते हैं पांडू को मारे तो हम लोगों को भी मारेंगे बोल के हम लोग फिर दोबारा हम लोग सरकार से मतलब आवेदन देना शुरू किए साहब बाकी खुश हैं पूरा खुश हैं हम लोग पूरा गांव के लोग भी खुश हैं और हम लोग भी खुश हैं साहब The day we arrived it was barely the 6th day of the camp being established This was no regular camp but one well within the operating zones of Naxals and surrounded by jungles and dense undergrowth The place where we stand right now as we told you earlier 
is the Tuleng camp which the Chhattisgarh police had very recently. Just six days back they started work on this and already some considerable amount of work has been done. Let me tell you the area where we stand right now is very densely uh, located and has got a lot of dense jungles around it and uh, operationally it is very difficult for the police forces to operate in an area like this wherein the undergrowth in the forest is really really dense. So this becomes a very interesting uh, camp for the Chhattisgarh police in the days to come on how they will operate in the region and how they will start pushing far beyond the Naxal zone and trying to infiltrate into their stronghold at this point of time. We'd also like to show you the road. You must have seen earlier that we've shown you the road is a very treacherous terrain. It is still a, a work in progress wherein Chhattisgarh police along with the government and the PWD is trying very hard to build a road through this really treacherous terrain. And uh, it's around 50 kilometers from Jagdalpur, the main uh, buster, this place, this camp where it is located but it takes around two and a half hours time to get over here. Again, the one more interesting thing in this whole scenario is that the locals, the Adivasis of this area, had zero access. They were completely cut off from the roads, infrastructure, from the rest of the world. And now this road that you see right behind me is going to be a game changer in this particular part of Bastar, wherein these people will not only have access to quality healthcare, but also a proper road network at last. In a mere six days, the Jawans of Bastar police managed to pull a commendable feat. From clearing the dense undergrowth to establishing a camp for over 200 Jawans in the midst of a jungle with little or zero access to supplies, as the road connectivity was quite bad. While at the Koling camp, we met the superintendent of Jagdalpur, Bastar region, Arif Sheikh. Some of the locals had arrived to thank the visiting SP for agreeing to set up a camp here. Apparently, during the last visit of IG Jagdalpur Range Vivekananda Sinha, these locals had stopped the vehicles of senior police officers and demanded a camp in their area. Arif had been lauded for his community policing in the area as well, which even won him two international awards. The Basta police, contrary to popular belief or mishandlings in the past, is quite popular with the locals and that's what we saw this time. Cops and civilians share an interesting camaraderie and a common enemy, the Naxals. There have been allegations in the past that the police forcibly brings the locals whenever the media arrives. But we were surprised to see that people only got to the camp on their own accord when they heard the cavalcade of SP arrive. It was clear that something was changing in Bastar. While at the camp, we were informed that there had been an IED on the route we took to reach the camp earlier. But the alert bomb disposal squad of the Buster police had managed to defuse it well in time back then. The ASP Jagdalpur showed us the ID and explained how it works. I am the ASP Jagdalpur. Now we have set up a new camp in the Koleng village. Here we are operating our DRG here. And we are operating the camp 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 here. हमारी टीम यहां लगातार निकल रही है एरिया डोमिनेशन कर रही है तो वैसे ही एक सूचना मिली थी कि आसपास के गांव में कुछ माओवादियों की उपस्थिति की सूचना इसको ध्यान में रखते हुए हमारी टीम यहां से लांच एक ऑपरेशन लांच की थी और जब हम जा रहे थे वहां पे तो रास्ते में एक आईडी मिला हमको जो देसी टिफिन बम जिसको माओवादियों ने तुरंत लगाया था हमारी टीम जैसे पहुंची और लोग वहां से भागने लगे जो माओवादी लोग हमने जाके उसको डिस्फ्यूज किया ये एक देसी टिफिन बम है इसके नीचे एक छेद है इसके अंदर ये कोडेक्स एक कोडेक्स वायर और ये जो लोहे के स्प्लिंटर ये एक एक जो स्प्लिंटर है जैसे ही आईडी ब्लास्ट होता है ये गोली का काम करती है जैसे ही ये गोली कहीं पर जाती है तो क्षतिग्रस्त करती है लोगों को तो ये वायर को यहाँ से डेटोनेटर है ये डेटोनेटर यहाँ पर लगता है डेटोनेटर का जो संबंध है ये वायर से एक स्विच के पास रहता है वहाँ दो 
सेल होते हैं बटन होता है जैसे ही फोर्स वहाँ से गुजरती है बटन ऑन करके इस आईडी को ब्लास्ट कर दिया जाता है तो ये इनकी लगातार बस्तर क्षेत्र में इस प्रकार की आईडी देखने को मिलती है इसको हमारे पुलिस की फोर्स ने डिस्प्यूज किया है और हमने पुलिस ने एक सफलता प्राप्त की है कोलिंग डिस्पाइट बींग मेयरली फ्यू आर्स अवे फ्रॉम जगदलपुर इज क्वाइट रिमोट इन एवरी सेंस फ्रॉम एजुकेशन टू हेल्थ केयर द फेसिलिटीज आर वेरी लिमिटेड वी मेट द लोकल डॉक्टर पोस्टेड एट द पब्लिक हेल्थ सेंटर हेयर एट कोलिंग इन द नक्सल हॉट बेड ऑफ बस्तर एज वी आर सिटिंग इन साइड द न्यूली इस्टेब्लिश कैंप by the bastar police by the chatisgarh police the local areas around this the tribal areas do not really have access to quality health care there's two the two doctors over here in the area and they've been doing a commendable job and we have to give it to them because operating in a far flung area as this which is also naxal infested is not really an easy thing I have with me the AMO of this particular area, Dr. Nusan Prasad. So, Dr. Gupta, ये बताइए कि कितना difficult होता है नक्सल जोन में आपको यहाँ पे काम करना यहाँ के आदिवासियों के लिए काम करना क्या दिक्कतें पेश आती है यहाँ सबसे पहले तो ये है सर कि सुविधा युक्त नहीं है हमारा जो हॉस्पिटल है वो ए सी नहीं है तो उसमें ये क्या हुआ कि सबसे पहले यहाँ सब सेंटर रहा है तो उस कंडीशन में आज भी ये सब सेंटर ही है तो वहाँ ना तो हम लोग पेशेंट एडमिट कर सकते हैं ना कुछ भी नहीं यानी स्वास्थ्य सुविधा बहुत कम है और यहाँ मतलब कर्मचारी भी कम होने की वजह से ज़्यादा सुविधा हम लोग उपलब्ध नहीं करा पाए जी जी तो इतनी मुश्किल में आप काम करते हैं कभी नक्सल आए हैं क्या आपके हॉस्पिटल पर आपके पब्लिक हेल्थ सेंटर पर इलाज कराने के लिए वो लोग तो आते नहीं हैं लेकिन उनका संदेश मिलता है संदेश मिलता है जी कि कुछ मतलब प्रॉब्लम हेल्थ संबंधित प्रॉब्लम होता है तब उन लोग संदेश भिजवाते हैं तो परेशान तो नहीं करते आपको कि आप यहाँ आदिवासियों की सेवा कर रहे हैं आप यहाँ पे डॉक्टर हैं जी जी पर पहले ही बात नहीं हुई है कभी लेकिन क्या है उनको जब प्रॉब्लम होता है तो उनकी सेवा के लिए हमें जाना पड़ता है हाँ तो आपको बुला लेते हैं जी सर उस वक्त से तो कैसा रहता है जब आपको बुलाते हैं ब्लाइंड फोल्ड करते हैं मतलब पट्टी वटी लगाते हैं आपको तो कैसे लेके जी नहीं ऐसी ऐसे सिंपल लेके जाते हैं हाँ हाँ इतना भरोसा है कि ठीक है भरोसे लाइट तो नहीं होता है हाँ और रिस्क भी है तो आपको डर नहीं लगता ऐसे आप नक्सल के बीच में जाते हैं उनका इलाज करते हैं नहीं ऐसा नहीं है ये तो जैसे वो तो अपना कंडीशन के ऊपर है कहीं कि मैं तो अब मेरा पर्सनली लेंगे तो मेरे को डर नहीं लगता क्योंकि वो भी आदमी है हमारे जैसे कुछ कारणवश वो लोग हथियार उठा लिए हैं कुछ समझदारी से कहिए या तो फिर कुछ प्रॉब्लम इसलिए मैं सोचता हूँ कि वो लोग हमारे ही जैसे हैं भले ही यानी भटक गए हैं इसलिए वो लोग हथियार उठा लिए अच्छा तो यहाँ पे क्या दिक्कतें पेश आती हैं हेल्थ केयर के मामले को लेके जब आप आदिवासियों का इलाज करते हैं क्या वो आ जाते हैं इलाज कराने के लिए यहाँ पे या फिर वो अपना ही तो उनका देसी इलाज जब वो करते हैं जी जी कुछ तो अभी भी अंधविश्वास के चलते देसी इलाज चलता है उन लोग का और ज़्यादा सीरियस कंडीशन आती है तब हॉस्पिटल पहुँचते हैं अच्छा जी तो आपके पास आते हैं जी तो यहाँ से पेशेंट जब हम आए थे अभी तो हमने रोड की हालत देखी थी रास्ता तो ऐसा है कि अगर पेशेंट ज़्यादा बीमार हो तो उसकी तो और हालत ख़राब हो जाए सड़क पर जाते जाने से जी तो कैसे मैनेज करते हैं आप कुछ कंडीशन ऐसी रहती है कि हमारी एम्बुलेंस भी है तो वहाँ से उनको रिसीव करते हैं हम और कुछ नॉर्मली जो है सर्दी बुखार है या कुछ भी तो वो लोग पहुँचते हैं तो आप यहाँ पे वो ट्रीट करते हैं दवाइयाँ वगैरह बराबर हैं आपके वो सफिशियंट है हमेशा रहते जी जी ठीक है थैंक यू वेरी मच डॉक्टर साहब तो यू सी दिस फाइन जेंटलमैन है डॉक्टर वो है is operating in very thankless conditions uh, with limited facilities whatever they have at their disposal operating in the heartland of uh, naxalism over here in the red corridor in bastar but still the person over here is really hopeful and somehow you see the difference between 
a regular individual and a doctor who believes in treating people and treating people equally. As time went by, it was time for us to return to Jagdalpur, where the SPRF Sheikh offered to explain their modus operandi to us. See, Bastar, uh, basically it is the name of the region and this district per se it is also called as Bastar. Jagdalpur is the capital of this Bastar uh, range and all Naxal operations which are uh, carrying uh, carried out across Bastar region, they are being coordinated from uh, Jagdalpur itself. Like uh, all air support as well as medical support. Another way of it all, it is arranged and coordinated from uh, the district headquarter of uh, Bastar. So, like uh, especially uh, the role of uh, uh, district Bastar, it becomes critical, especially during uh, evacuation of casualties especially during uh, uh, very uh, rainy seasons and uh, during actual when uh, the firing is taking place it becomes very critical for us how we evacuate them and to rush them as soon as possible to the hospital so this is one of the important aspect uh, that uh, we carry out apart from it uh, Bastar district also uh, has uh, its share of Naxal problem and uh, the whole district it can be divided into two divisions one is Darbha division and the other is West Bastar division so the Darbha division is the most notorious kind of division but of late uh, since last few years we have been able to dominate the Darbha division and uh, we were able to neutralize lot many top cadres of the Darbha division so Darbha division has weakened a bit and uh, taking advantage of this situation we are making inroads into deep interior areas of uh, Darbha division and uh, hitherto unexplored areas where PV, uh, police did not go at all. Now we are going and we are carrying out uh, community policing programs there and we are trying to uh, associate people with police uh, during such programs. So we have got a very tremendous response uh, from people and they are coming on their own and uh, joining police force. They are willing to help police. So together like we are ushering a new kind of development in that particular area. Peace is prevailing there and uh, like uh, all uh, people who had joined Naxal Carter also, now a few of them they have surrendered and they have joined the national mainstream. So we are following this twin pronged approach of development as well as operations like uh, up, uh, apart from the uh, rehabilitation part we are carrying out uh, offensive operations also and we were able to neutralize many top cadres especially if we consider the west buster division we were able to eliminate uh, top cadres there also so overall i can say that uh, naxal menace is on decline in uh, buster district uh, and uh, talking about the whole buster region as well police is having an upper hand and in terms of uh, active Naxalites over here, how many are roughly in your area? Uh, see, the whole Naxal movement, like uh, you cannot uh, divide it uh, uh, into uh, who is Naxal and who is not, like it is very difficult. But there are some Naxal sympathizers also, uh, we who are overground workers, underground workers. So overall, if we uh, look at Bastar, if I am talking about only pure Naxals who were um, these black uniforms around 150 to 200 are there. While Arif was explaining their modus operandi to us, we asked him that if he could show us the sensitive areas and challenges Buster police faces on a map and he did oblige. Uh, this is my district, Buster. This is the headquarter of Buster district that is called Jagdalpur. Now the road which travels from Jagdalpur to Dantewada. Right. Okay, this road it divides the entire district into two parts. Okay, the road divides uh, the Darbha division into two parts. Okay, so this part is Darbha division, and the upper side it is Londi Guda side, right. uh, it is West Bastar division. Okay, so this area the Darbha division 
the road which travels from Jagdalpur to Sukma, it further divides the Darbha division into two parts. This part it is called as Kangir Valley Area Committee, and this part it is called as Petakalan Area Committee. This upper side, which I called uh, uh, Pashchim Bastar or West Bastar Division, the Indravati River divides it further into the southern part it is called as Barsur Area Committee and the other part it is called as Kuwanar Area Committee. Now we are having uh, like domination in the entire Darbha area and many camps have come across of CRPF as well as our DRG. So <coughs> police is having an upper hand in the Darbha division and uh, many of the Naxal cutters they are on back foot and they are uh, willing to surrender also. So I am very sure that uh, in next uh, few years Naxals will be totally eliminated from the entire Darbha division. Right. If we consider the Western Buster division of Naxalites, so it falls under three districts: Kondaga, Narayanpur, as well as Bastar, and a few part of Dantewada district is also touched by this division. So a coordinated action between all these districts is very essential to eliminate uh, Naxals from this area. Uh, recently we have established a camp which is called as Koleng. The Koleng camp is strategically very very important to us because that camp is established close to the Orissa border. Right. Okay. So what happens normally since I have already told that police is having an upper hand in that area. Whenever police venture into that area what they do is they cross the border and they go into Orissa area. So police could not plug them, uh, their movement. So what we did was we have established a camp called as Koling. It is right here, okay, at the border. So with this camp, we will be able to address uh, the uh, critical area which is called as Chanda Meta. Normally uh, they hide in that area. So we'll be able to address that area. And within within few hours of intelligence that they are hiding there, we can go and we can hit that area. So, strategically, this area is very, very important. It was a tiring day for the team after a back-breaking journey to a Naxal-infested jungle, to visiting a newly established camp of Bastar police in Koling, and it was time now for us to call it a day. But we left Bastar with some vivid memories of the changing times in this part of the Red Corridor, with the hope that India as a nation and Chhattisgarh as a state doesn't fail its fellow citizens in the Naxal zones, the tribals looked hopeful and sought peace, and our security forces were seen working on it 24-7. We all hope that the cycle of violence comes to an end, and the government of the day takes corrective measures to address the grievances of the tribals. As we bid goodbye to Buster, we were reminded of the happy moments we spent with the brave Javans of Bastar Police DRG. <laughs> Yeah!